En map, more like en chat. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. En map is one of the most used tools when it comes to network security. En map stands for network mapper, and we use en map to scan the ports of a network and gather information about the server. This is very useful for admins as they easily can scan their network and try to hack it in order to stop the same types of hacks in the future. In en map standard mode, it searches through the network's ports by simply connecting to them with a TCP connection. A TCP connection starts off with the client, or in this case, the computer that is using en map. The client sends a scene request message to a server which responds with a scene ACK message. ACK stands for acknowledgement and as the name suggests it tells the client that the server has received the scene request. Scene stands for something you know, network? The client then sends back an ACK message which tells the server that the client acknowledges the server's acknowledgement of the scene request the client sent to get the acknowledgement of the server so that it then could send the acknowledgement of the acknowledgement. Then a connection is made between the devices so that the devices now can talk and send data to each other. As an example, if it is an HTTP website on the port, often port 80, the client requests different pages of the website and the server sends them. We in fact use TCP pretty much always on the internet. You're even using it now watching this video and when watching other videos. Then when the client is done, they send a fin message telling the server that the connection is over. The server then sends back an acknowledgement of the fin message and the client sends back an acknowledgement of the acknowledgement of the fin message. So in short, Nmap sends a scene request to the server's different ports and records the response. If the port sends back a scene act telling the client that it's open, then it's open. What the f did you expect? If the port however sends back a reset message telling the client that it's closed, it means that the port doesn't have any service on it and therefore it can't do anything. If the status of the port is filtered, it means that the request Nmap sent couldn't reach or the port didn't respond. This can be because of things like firewalls or bad internet connection. An unfiltered port is a port that Nmap can figure out if it's closed or open. This is the standard way of Nmap, but there are also different flags that we can set using Nmap. One of these is a dash SS one. The flags we set changes how Nmap scans the server and we use it to bypass different things and get a better understanding of the system. The SS flag is nope, 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 get it away, get it away, wrong SS. SS stands for stealth scan and like you probably guessed it is a stealthier way to scan a server. A stealth scan starts off like a normal one by sending a scene request to a port. The port then like normal sends back a scene act to the client. But instead of sending an act message, Nmap sends a reset message telling the server to stop the communication. This makes it so that your computer actually never makes a whole connection with the server and therefore it's easier to slip by firewalls. But nowadays most firewalls can detect this as well. So Nmap more or less works like a normal computer. But it's an easy way to control your requests and messages to a server so that the response of the server is what you want. Let's also go through how Nmap detects which OS the server is running. The OS detection flag is dash O. Nmap again more or less only sends TCP requests to the server to see what OS it's running. However, when trying to find the OS, Nmap puts much greater care into the actual response of the server. All OSs respond slightly differently. It could be things like the IP ID and the TCP IP options. The TCP messages are broken into small packets so that the message more easily can be delivered to the server. And this is also true for the TCP messages that the server sends back to us. These packets can take different routes and arrive in a different order than they were sent. And the IP ID is given to each packet of the TCP message so that they can be assembled in the right order when they arrive. Different operating systems have different sequences for the IP ID. As an example, Windows often use sequential IP IDs while Linux uses random IDs. Nmap takes the responses of the server and compares them to the OS database that it uses. And if the types of responses match any of the operating systems in the database, Nmap can tell what OS it is. However, this isn't always accurate and Nmap can make mistakes. So that's it. That's the video. Why are you still here? It, it's over. Go away. I'm done. Leave. Leave.